good Monday morning. It is the final trading session of July, and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to break it all down. Jim, Dow reaching a record high, but as you write in real money, you become bearish on Washington. Yes, on Washington. That's really important because there are a lot of people like Grover Norquist, an old friend of mine from college, came on and said, don't worry about it. There'll be tax reform. will be on uh, in Congress September 28th. I just don't see that happening. And, and I have to pull back a little just because I had thought that at least repatriation would happen. When I was uh, interviewing Mick Mulvaney via mm -hmm. OMB, uh, they're talking about it has to be all one big package. And that was the mistake of, uh, of Obama and the mistake of the Republic. Anytime you're one big package, you can't get it through. And it was so dispiriting for uh, hate or like uh, Obamacare, the idea that the Republicans weren't even together enough after something that they said for seven years they were going to do. I just questioned if they were going to do that and wanted to do that for seven years, uh, what are they going to do with, a, with an agenda that is forced on them that they don't really seem to have any interest in? And when you killed the cross-border tax, what that, ki what that did was kill most of tax reform because they have to do it revenue neutral. They can certainly say, listen, it's temporary. That's not been the Republican style. I think people are misreading. The Republicans do not want uh, a, a uh, anything that would make it so there's more borrowing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think things are going to be very, very tough in Washington. Don't look for help from that. Uh, stay focused on the companies, but it's certainly uh, still, I think most people still think something good's going to happen in Washington. Mm -hmm. I no longer do. Wow. All right. And we also have a merger on this Monday, Discovery and Scripps. Right. And there's one that I think shows you that there's still value to uh, programming that's evergreen. Uh, one of the reasons why I think a lot of us kind of felt that Discovery uh, might have uh, going, going after uh, scripts is because they are these slivers, these niches, but the niches turn out to be very broad, so it's not really a niche, because scripts has a very powerful hold on food, very powerful on do-it-yourself, a big woman audience, but what, it, what I think is amazing here is here you've got two companies getting together with evergreen content, and yet there's Disney struggling with ESPN, which is active content. And, and we always hear that what people really want is live programming. There's really nothing live when it comes to either discover, discovery or these uh, various networks of scripts, and yet they want scripts because they want to be part of a relevant bundle and be able to put something together. I, I do think that this is a, a lot of synergies, a really good deal for Discovery, which had become irrelevant. All right, we'll watch how that plays out. Also, Dow Chemical CEO Andrew Liver is facing an activist investor battle. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a, um, this is really rather odd. I think that Ed Breen, who runs DuPont, is going to bring out as much value as possible. Go check out what he did at Tyco. Uh, uh, and a lot of these activists, I think, are really just against Liveris, um, which surprises me. It wasn't like Liveris did, was not competent. He created a lot of value at Dow, but I think they want Breen to just carry the ball and to get Liveris out of there. Uh, I think it's the wrong focus. I think that they should just be sticking by Breen and watch him create great value. Well, and you just spoke to Andrew Livers recently on Sports Yeah, I spoke to him last week. I mean, well, he gave me the Heisman on this. He was not about to talk about uh, breaking into more companies, even though his company has six different divisions, which is where I came up with the question of, like, could there be six different companies? If he has six different divisions and DuPont has a similar number of divisions, it's hard to imagine that there are only going to be three companies. All right, meanwhile, Charter Communications is not interested in buying Sprint. Jim, what did you yeah, think? Yeah, the whole thing's very convoluted, but it does feel like that there's going to be some sort of deal in cable. Uh, I have to defer entirely to David Faber mm. uh, because he has been breaking uh, uh, these stories left and right. Uh, he's been accurate. He says there will be no deal, but at the same time, he recognizes where there's smoke, there's fire. So we want to stay tuned. And Jim, that reminds me of Verizon's rally. I mean, I know you just went over the conference Ver call yet again. Verizon, yeah, I had to because... I'm trying to figure out how much of Verizon gaining sh uh, share it has to do with the fact of the unlimited plan. Um, those of us who have uh, Verizon, I, I think th there is, for me at least, a decline in uh, in the actual service. But uh, when they went unlimited, I think so many people joined that they were somewhat overwhelmed. I think they themselves were definitely positively surprised by the number of customers they got. All right, here's a topic, Jim, you've talked about a lot, the SNAP lockup period expiring today. Yeah, I mean, look, I wanted SNAP to be able, I wanted management to come out and say, look, we've talked to the large holders and we don't expect uh, any stock to come for sale. Uh, we didn't get that. Uh, SNAP has been like Blue Apron, uh, very, very disappointing. Uh, it is surprising to me that uh, it, it is the stock's doing that poorly, but then again, the first uh, earnings period out of the shoot was bad, and, and that's quite shocking. Mm.
All right, now millennials are taking selfies on Snap, and with that, you need to look good, and that's where Ulta Beauty comes into play. Shares are getting hit today. Right. Well, Ulta, L'Oreal is very affiliated with uh, with Ulta. They're the number one partner. And L'Oreal had a, uh, a remarkable conference call last week that people didn't uh, focus on enough, which said, look, there's been a slowdown uh, in this area, this mass market, which is Ulta. Uh, and Ulta stock has been going down, down, down. And what's clear is, is that all this does is verify why the stock's been going down. So I think someone will try to make a stand in it. But what was, da- what was I'd say, quizzical was L'Oreal had no real answer about what's going on. Now, what we've heard is, is that a lot of department stores have gotten a lot of price cutting on cosmetics to get people in. But it's very clear from the L'Oreal conference call that there's no way Ulta can be doing as well as it is, or, or that we thought it might be, given L'Oreal's comments, because they made sure that people understood they affiliated with Ulta. That's right. mass market. Estee Lauder is up market. Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure Estee Lauder uh, has been saying good things, but Estee Lauder is also partnered with Ulta. So um, Ulta is really kind of the center of all things. Hmm. All right, and then on your stop trading segment, Jim, you talked about Costco. Well, I just think that I'm watching the nature, I'm using Costco as a bit of an analog. If you look at all the retailers, the bricks and mortar retailers, post the Amazon conference call, you do see that they're coming back. Uh, Kohl's has had a big move. Now Dillard's, congratulations Doug Cass for catching that Dillard move, was really incredible. It was his pick. But I, I, I think that what's happened is people are saying, wait a second, Amazon didn't kill everybody. Now, uh, they certainly intend to, and when you get involved, uh, Amazon could come out with a press release and really come after a lot of different companies, and maybe we would reconfigure and bet against these uh, brick-and-mortar retailers again. But they're, they're moving up, and Costco's moving up. Costco, I think, has made a bottom. Remember, Costco has uh, membership fees. That's how they make their money. Uh, it is true that when Whole Foods opens it up, and when the two German companies uh, really blow out their uh, their supermarkets, I think Costco will be under pressure again. But right now, the whole group's lifting. And I think it's because the Amazon call did not inspire you to think that Amazon's winning on every single front. All right, and Jim, we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. A big one on Tuesday, Apple. Yeah, I mean, I want people just to go to our bulletins uh, from Action Alert, and you can see what we're saying at this very moment about Apple. All right, Jim, are you gonna buy the iPhone 8? <laughs> uh, yeah, I will. Um, <laughs> I, I will get it for my kids. They're still using the six and the five. All right. And then, Jim, I also know it was a big weekend for your garden. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I had to put up a trellis to be able to handle the cucumbers. They were about to, they were about to literally attack one of my favorite trees, and I had to put a stop to it by putting trellises up. These things, they have tendrils. You wouldn't believe. There's a, a very interesting picture I posted. I put in a trellis, and within a couple hours, the cucumbers' tendrils had already wrapped around it. Uh, send me your time-lapse photography. It's really incredible. We love when you post your garden pics. Thank you very much. And Jim, before we go, we also just want to mention our Trading Strategies Roundtable tomorrow, 11 a.m. We'll be talking about what's hot in August. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yes. Thank you. We're going to have a great time. And Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. All right. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.